this is another uh, update in regards to my HCG usage. So uh, for those of you who are relatively new to the channel or just subscribing, uh, or this is your first video with me, uh, I started HCG back in June of 2021. The plan was to do about six months of, uh, th of therapy with HCG, 250 IUs, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, I, I talked to my PCP, they agreed to give me a prescription for it in order to try this in order to cure my post finasteride syndrome. And, uh, you know, I've had a number of blog updates since then. Um, in my last video, I was going to try in order to reduce the gyno symptoms and try and reduce the need for um, I've been taking uh, oh shoot, what have I been taking? Um, I've been taking Clomid, and so with that, it actually was giving me some lack of libido, and it was giving me a lack of, um, yeah, like a lack of, lack of libido, lack of uh, my sexual function kind of, uh, you know, regressed when I was starting to have a lot of improvements. So I got, a, so I switched to 500 IUs. So long story short, I only did that for about a week. Um, and this is an update from my last video. I only did it for about a week and that's because I was having some serious insomnia problems. I could only sleep for a few hours and then I'd wake up and then I'd be tired for the whole day. And, um, I, and so that I switched back to 250 IUs overall, how am I feeling? Uh, brain fog is pretty much gone at this point. Um, like depression symptoms are pretty much gone. Um, I like I really don't have anxiety anymore. My gym performance uh, has been going up. I actually hit a new PR on the deadlift of uh, 505 pounds. I think that's around 220, 230 kilos. I'm not 100% certain about the uh, about the conversion there. Could be a little off. Uh, and then um, I've had like ever since uh, I, when I was switched. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, sexual function. So in order to try and get my sexual function back, um, I, so I tried out instead of Clomid, when I went back to 250, I use, I tried a little bit of a around 250 micrograms every day that I do the injection. And I found that that definitely gave me some decent relief. It wasn't perfect, but it was definitely better than not having, uh, then using the Clomid in terms of, uh, sexual function and libido and everything like that. Um, and I, I wanted to, uh, also touch on like, you know, my, my gym performance has been very good and, uh, uh, wanted to add in that I have some blood work that we're going to go over. Uh, and I, I can kind of probably explain why my gym performance went up. So without further ado, let's get into that there blood work. All right, so let's switch scenes. This is from Merrick Health. I actually, that's, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the, the place, moreplacedatemoredates.com, but I went through Merrick Health. I wanted to talk to them about my post finasteride syndrome and try and get things dialed in, in which I'll be providing an update about that after I show you the blood work that they got. So, as you can see, um, the only thing that shows up as being a little bit off is my T4 free is a little high, um, and my TSH is a little bit high, and uh, nothing, nothing like terrible. Like 2.3 is still technically within the reference range, but I w definitely want to get that back down to one, and I think I will over time as I continue to drop weight. Um, my bun and creatinine are just high because I train and this is probably like the, the fifth or sixth lab result there that's been high. My glucose is fantastic, uh, so I'm definitely not worried about diabetes. I'm at the bottom of the range uh, fasting and, you know, my nothing in my blood work suggests that I would need blood transfusions or anything like that because my hematocrit and hemoglobin are both in good in good ranges. So in all in all, everything is looking pretty good. Uh, so then we'll go on to the next set of, next page. So, um, nothing on here is really, you know, standing out. My AST and ALT are both in good shape, which I expect them to be. 
Um, you know, nothing nothing is off here, so not a whole lot to go over. And then uh, my blood work, uh, my lipid panel, cholesterol is around, you know, is in well within the range. My HDL is fine, triglycerides are fine, and then the it's it's continued on the next page. Um, my LDL, you know, 81, nothing, nothing crazy. HDL, LDL is in good shape. Now I can explain why my gym performance is up. And, uh, yeah. Um, last time I think my T was around 670 and the Clomid combined with the, um, with the, uh, HCG. Yeah. My testosterone is very high super physiological like this is definitely like basically you know it's like a, a minor cycle almost of terms of testosterone which is probably why i was having gyno because i was probably having very high estrogen engine at the same time because testosterone that is produced by your uh by your testicles also has a lot more aromatizing than if you were to inject so it's very likely that's why um i talked to the Merrick health doctor and he says that's because he thinks that I'm a hyper responder to HCG, so uh, I'm going to bump the dose down a bit, probably drop it to like 150, 175 I use, and then um, uh, I'll add in what his plan for me is once we're done going through the blood work. But as you can see, my, t my, my total, my free T and my regular T or, or total T are very high, 1500 and then 58. I was shocked to hear this. I had no idea that my testosterone was this high. I did, I, but I did notice my gym performance was going up considerably. And well, now I know why my testosterone was double what it was, more than double what it was last time I had had it measured back in July. Um, but I definitely want to get this down because I don't want my testosterone to be that high in general. Uh, it's not going to be that high once I go off of HCG. So I don't want to get used to having a lot of tea in my system. Uh, hemoglobin A1C is 5.1, which is really good, uh, as far as I know. And my cortisol is well within range. So nothing going on there in terms of cortisol or stress. Uh, my C-reactive protein or my cardiac risk is at least low because anything below one is, is good. And then as you can see, my estradiol was high. Um, the, the, you know, this, I think it was probably even higher before because I think I had this was after like a couple of doses of Arimidex once I when I was switching off of Clomid. So, um, you know, this was after even taking that. So I'm pretty certain my estradiol was is would probably would have been like a 50 or something like that. Um, yeah, but other than and then also my T3 is, you know, well with, you know, another thyroid test right here is well within limits. And then uh, last but last not least, um, I don't know why this is all the way at the bottom, but um, my SHBG is high, but it's that's my SHBG is always high, so I'm not exactly surprised by this. So in regards to this um, blood work, uh, you know, <laughs> My progesterone and my testosterone were both in good ranges. It's, my progesterone was back in normal ranges, which is probably why I'm feeling a hell of a lot better. I think my five alpha, alpha reductase pathway has been improved. Now, uh, with having said that, actually, let me get my my plan up here now that I've been through my blood work. Um, they wanted to have me uh, start on, let me get this. Naltrexone, which is also known as Narcan, which is an, um, what is it? It is considered a, it's basically an overdose medication, but in low doses is actually shown to fix the serotonin pathways, which could also lead to uh, improved erection quality that, and apparently it's known to have long lasting effects well after you stop taking it. So I'm uh, going to give that, uh, give that a try. And then they also are going to have me on tamoxifen um, to make sure that uh, we can remove any gyno that's left from the HCG. Uh, take that for um, for probably like a month and a half, six weeks. And then uh, they want me to take uh, Tadalafil or Cialis five milligrams daily, which will improve blood flow. 
Um, I've been staying away from Cialis just because it gave me sensitivity issues, but I think I was already having problems, so I'm going to give it a shot again. Um, and then, you know, we'll see, we'll see where, how, where things go from here, uh, in terms of my, uh, my progress, but I will say like, um, I've, I've definitely had some significant symptom relief from the HCG. Um, and I, from what I would to believe there are other pathways you can take. Um, you could also take pregnenolone, which will repopulate the progesterone pathway. And maybe it, you can avoid having to take HCG altogether, unless you also are pairing that with relatively low T then I guess you could try the HCG to both bump your T testosterone and get your progesterone uh, production back up. But, uh, you know, these are all things I'm, I'm, I'm messing with my body, seeing what I can get working for, what will work for my body. And so far the HCG has been a big boon. And, uh, you know, I'll get more blood work once uh, we're done with everything that is recommended here. Uh, I'll get another set of blood work when I'm done with all of my treatments and, you know, we'll see where my testosterone lies probably six to eight weeks past HCG. Um, but in the meantime, I'll uh, update you as I'm taking these medications that have been recommended by Merrick Health. Again, that's naltrexone low dose, I think 1.5 milligram and 4.5 milligram and then 10 milligram tamoxifen, which is, I think that's Novodex. So, and then Cialis or uh, Tadalafil. Well, I think that's about all I have today for my updates. So if you like what you hear, you wanna, you wanna continue listening to this series, like and subscribe, like this video, hit the subscribe button and then I will continue to, I'll finish this up. 